Alright, so today I have a really quick video on how to make a scratch start TIG welder. What I got right here is my setup. Uh, I'm going to go through really quickly. If you're watching this video, it's probably because you want to figure out how to make your own little TIG welder at home. Uh, this is not a very uh, intelligent type of welder, so it doesn't have high frequency start, lift start, or anything like that. The benefit of a system like this is it's very inexpensive to get into, especially since a lot of you may already have a welder. So I'll just go through what you need to get into building this machine. Now, the reason why I wanted to build this machine is I wanted to try my hand at just seeing what TIG welding was like. By no means is this a wonderful welder for doing like really precise TIG work. First thing, you need a power supply. So I have here in uh, Princess Auto, or you could probably Harbor Freight for my American friends, um, one of these cheap DC inverter welders. Very small, but very capable. So this is a great little unit, and I already had it, so it didn't cost me anything technically. Next up you'll need, of course, is what makes it all possible is a TIG torch. Um, this guy here is the WP17. I got this guy, I think, off eBay, but you can get him on Amazon now. Uh, I bought this a few years ago. I've changed up the handle on this. It came with a handle that had a switch on it, but I found it too bulky. I like that this one I can grasp with just like a couple fingers. So I 3D printed this, but uh, the one that came with it's totally fine. This is just a preference thing. What makes this TIG torch unique is that it has a valve on it so that it controls the flow of the gas. So that is really important for a setup like this because it's not fancy. So you need a torch head like this and this torch head comes with the, with the cable and a hose that lets the gas flow through it that connects to your bottle of argon, which is the next thing that you will need. You need 100% argon. Um, don't use any mixes. You, if you have a MIG setup like I have back there, you can't use your MIG gas, um, your CO2 and argon mixture. Go 100% argon. From all the research I've done, that's what you should be using now. I think they used to use, this, this process used to be called Heliarc, so I think they used to use helium for, um, for TIG welding as well. But now I think it's completely switched to argon. And the last thing you need is an argon regulator, CO2 argon regulator. They're basically both the same thing, just so you know your, your gas flow and you can control the flow of gas. So to recap, you need a welder, a torch, a bottle of argon, and a regulator. That is the most simplest setup. Oh, and you'll also need some tungsten. I bought two packs. This is uh, a one that's a little too small, but I have a bigger one here. You can always buy larger tungsten and sharpen them down to uh, a sharp tip, which is what you want, a nice sharp tip. So the type I have here is 1 16th, the blue tungsten, blue tipped. This is the 2% lanthanated tungstens. And all I do is I stick these in a drill and then I just sharpen them on my grinder. I spin them and I get a nice sharp tip on them. You're gonna go through a lot of tungsten, so I highly recommend sharpening a whole bunch of them, having them ready so you can change them out. And what these do, and what how they fit in your torch head, is you got this long piece here. Obviously, if your tungsten's long, it fits up into this, um, into this, I guess, holder at the end here. I forget the name of that part. And then this holds in the tungsten and the and the gas flow because there's a little gasket on this as well, a little O-ring because your gas flows through the torch head and then comes out through your cup. And I have a number five cup on this. I'll talk about that here in a second. So my tungsten's in here. I have my collet. Fits in the collet like that. And then it goes into my torch head. And the stick out for the tungsten is related to the cup size that I have on this. I have a number five cup on this. So it's gonna be 5 sixteenths of an inch uh, stick out on this. So it's in sixteenths of an inch. So whatever your cup size number is will be your uh, top number. So it'll be five sixteenths. And then this just screws in, holding in the collet. And lastly for the gas flow is related to your cup size. It's double the cup size number. So I have a number five. So five times two gives me 10. So it's gonna be 10 cubic feet per hour of flow. At least I think it's uh, per hour. So that's it for tungstens.
This here are my consumables, so my filler rods. I have some, these are both 1 16th of an inch and they're pretty long. I have some mild steel ones and then I have some stainless ones. All right, so I'll go over the advantages of this setup. Very simple, very inexpensive. Um, your most, your biggest expense is going to be your bottle of Argon, but it will get you into it so you can start practicing. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the advantages. You're not going to do wonderful welds with this, but you'll do okay welds with it. And another reason why I'm using this is I can, what I like about TIG welding is you can weld some material together without adding more material. The tungsten can just create a, an arc and melt the material without adding any additional material. So that's really great for welding like two seams together sometimes or in my case a lot of times I like using this for just tacking things together really quickly especially thin materials. Okay so the disadvantages of this system is it's a scratch start meaning you scratch it to initiate the arc as opposed to like a high frequency start or um, a lift start where you touch and the circuitry smart it knows as you're lifting off to initiate the arc. With this you actually need to initiate the arc by scratching just like stick welding. But it's fairly easy to get used to. The disadvantages though around that is it does consume a little bit of the tungsten every time you do that. You can contaminate your weld a little bit by doing that. So you could scratch start off of like a starter plate, another piece of material, or on another part of your item that you're welding and then move the, um, the torch over to where you want to weld. The other big thing, and now that I've done some TIG welding with this, is heat control is really important. You can't do that with this. All you can do is just control the heat on your machine. So there is no foot pedal on a system like this because it's very dumb in order to be able to control your heat when you're welding. Because when you start welding, it, your material is cold. But as you start welding and you're moving along your bead, it uh, creates heat. And you don't you either need to move faster or um, you need to turn down your heat but of course you can't turn down the heat so you, all you can do is control the speed that you weld um, to help offset that so that's kind of a disadvantage the other thing is you can't do post flow meaning you can't stop the arc and then let the argon gas keep flowing to help kind of cool the weld and to um, keep an atmosphere on your weld as it's cooling to keep your weld clean so that's just something to keep in mind. Like I said, this is a very crude way of TIG welding, but you get you into it. I'm sure there's other disadvantages, but the last one also is, and it's not too big of in my case because I don't weld much aluminum or I don't weld any aluminum, is you can't weld aluminum with this, at least not well. I think you can weld aluminum with DC power, but um, it's not ideal because I think uh, it, it causes too much penetration or something like that. Whereas you need AC current in order to weld aluminum and typically I think you need high frequency um, AC to weld aluminum well. Uh, at least all the research that I've done, never tried it, don't know. So uh, do your research on that. I think it has something to do with that the oxide on aluminum uh, melts at a higher temperature than the aluminum itself. So um, the AC provides some type of cleaning action or something like that. Yeah, that allows you to weld aluminum. Go look it up. Don't go by what I'm saying. I just know that they say that it's harder to do and you can't really do it with a machine like this. Oh, and something really important, the setup for this is you need to make sure that your cables are set up. Your ground clamp will be set up to the positive side of your welder and then your torch lead will go in to the negative side. So this is DC negative. So just keep that in mind your torch head will connect to the DC negative side of things. So it's reverse polarity DC. I think that's what they call it. So just to remember your ground clamp goes into the positive side of your welder and your torch head goes into the negative side. Really easy to remember. So overall the performance of this machine works really well. These DC welders are awesome. They're so light, they're compact um, and it just, this created some decent welds. I used it to weld some table legs. I've used it to, I'm working on another project with stainless and it's uh, allowed me to weld some seams together um, without having to add any additional material to it. Again, the main thing is the heat control. 
Um, so that's a little bit tricky on this, especially if you're welding like thinner items. But overall, this has been uh, uh, a good experience. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and useful to get you into building your own scratch start TIG welder. Um, yeah, I create all kinds of videos on my channel from DIYs to surfboard building to all kinds of things. So consider subscribing to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.